Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Fry's Gymnasium on the campus of Jersey City State College, where tonight the Gothics of Jersey City will match up with the profs of Glassboro State. North versus South, the two best. Uh, there'll be some discrepancy there with Kane undefeated in the conference. Bob Leveline along with the coach, John Adams, to bring you all the action. And, John, I got a little bit excited today when I realized this one was coming up. Jersey City State, some key transfers. We already saw Glassboro with their key transfers. This is a real matchup. Bob, this is perhaps the, uh, the most important game to date in the conference. Okay, John, we're going to go down this one quick. We got ourselves all planned up and came in ready. Give us depth. Well, I think if you look at both teams, both teams have probably the most depth of any team in the conference. I think, though, with the addition of new transfers, the edge goes to State. Okay, rebounding, John. Well, if we talked about this game last week, I would have to go with the <laughs> Glasgow State props. But with the addition of Sean Rooney, a transfer from Duquesne, and also uh, Neil uh, King, a transfer from CW Post, 6 6, six 7 respectively, I think it's a wash. So I know the, the uh, edge that Glassboro thought they had last week in preparation has now vanished. And sticking with our one-word theme for tonight, John, field goal percentage. Well, here's where Jersey City has a problem. Right now, as a team, they're only shooting 40% from the field. Glassboro very close to 50. And my final one word, tempo. Tempo. Both teams are very similar, a lot of similar personnel, but I think that if Glassboro wants to get into a running match, this is not the team to do it with. So I really look for the Glassboro profs to make Jersey City execute their half-court game, although both teams do that very well, and both teams love to run. If we're looking for point spread, Jersey City's looking to get to the high 70s and 80s, and Glassboro State, high 50s, 60s, to win this ball game. Okay, John, real quick, a last thought. Glassboro upset, although nothing's an upset, I believe, in this conference, by Trenton State in their last outing. Brought them down to earth a little bit. Well, yes, but, you know, that's part of this conference. You must win at home, and Trenton State did. This is a very important game for both teams, but especially Dr. John Genie's Glassboro State props. Okay, one last thing. The dean of coaches right now in the conference, Charlie Brown, versus the new kid on the block almost. John Giannini came in and made a real ripple when he came in. Coach Brown's done it year in, year out. Does the bench, does that any edge to anybody in that? Well, I'm really expecting a very close game. Uh, I think both coaches are excellent, but Charlie's been here a little bit longer. But one other statistic which we didn't bring up is Glassboro State is an excellent foul shooting team. Jersey City State is only shooting 56% from the free throw line. In close games, could mean the difference. Okay, this should be a great one. But before we get to the tip-off, we're going to take a short stop and visit with both coaches. We'll be right back. Welcome to the office of head coach Charles Brown of the Jersey City State Gothics. Coach, thanks for taking some time before today's game to stop and talk with us. We appreciate that first, and Happy New Year from one old friend to another. Uh, quick overview of what's going on with the Gothics to date. Well, right now we're 11-3 we're with 6-1 and one in the conference. Um, we've really got a couple of players, new players, that we're trying to fit into our system. I don't think we're playing great right now, and this is a big game for us tonight with uh, Glassboro, so we'll, we'll get a more of a handle on just how good or bad we're playing with, with, when we're by the end of this game tonight. Well, you gave me your usual guarded optimism when we ran into each other early in the season at one of the games. You said if you could get away with 500 in the conference at Christmas time, you'd be real happy with the change in some players and the maturity of the young guys. Obviously, you got away with a little bit more than even numbers there. Uh, do you think this gives you a real good jump off point for the second half of the season? Oh, yeah, we're, and we're looking forward to it. You know, and I always go into the season op optimistic. You know, uh, we had a lot of people back from last year, and we've got a lot of new youngsters who are, are really coming along now. We've got five or six freshmen who at the beginning of the year I wasn't sure of, and now I think I can depend on them. And with the addition of Neil King and Sean Rooney, once these two guys get into shape in a few weeks and, 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 and uh, uh, get into playing shape, I think we'll, we'll have an excellent basketball team. You get a visitor today. John Giannini brings his props in. They may be hungry for bear. Wrong time to get them, I think. They were upset the other day. They come in here, but I think this team here with Jersey City, and I think you probably feel the same as I do, 
always up to the challenge. Well, yeah, and we're at home, too. I think that's an important factor. I, I know they're going to be hungry. That they're, they were kind of disappointed that they lost, and they, that brought them back to the pack with us as far as, as the uh, losses in the conference is concerned. Uh, we feel that uh, in order for us to win this thing and to uh, get a good seed, that we think that uh, we're going to have to at least split with Glassboro, and we have to go there. So this is a big game for us. We, we need to win, really win this game tonight. You had a tough game in, in your only loss in the conference to Kane. You made a great, valiant comeback, and you come away, and a few unforced errors cost you the contest. I think you have to add that off to uh, immaturity of the team and, you know, just some mistakes. Do you see the team starting to show that poise that, that's always been indicative of your squads? Well, you know, um, be honest with you, you know, we're winning, but we still haven't shown the poise yet that, that I think that we're going to show. Um, as I said before, it, it's been one of those seasons where we've just had to, we've been exchanging uh, players. Uh, we didn't start the same lineup for the first seven or eight games. Now we got two new guys and we're trying to bring them in. So, you know, we're still not solid as a team yet. I think that uh, in the next two or three weeks, uh, once we're able to fit people in and people will get to the point where they know exactly where they're going to be and what position and how they're going to be playing, and I think we'll be a solid basketball team. Okay, Glassboro comes in with a real good team. They brought in two Division One transfers also. Give us a quick assessment of the Glassboro and what you expect to see from them. Well, Glassboro's a big team. They're probably the biggest team in our conference. Uh, in order for us to win the game tonight, I think we're going to have to do a lot of do a, a good job of rebounding. We've got to block out and rebound. I don't think they're as quick as we are, but we can't get out if we don't rebound. So to me, the key is rebound. Our defensive intensity is is is, is what's going to get us over if we win tonight. They're a fine basketball team. They're well coached. Uh, they have uh, Frank Sermontangelo. He he shoots the lights out. He shoots NBA threes. They're real physical in and we're going to have to be real physical tonight. Well, let me ask you a question that I already know the answer to. Is there anything new in Charlie Brown's theory of defense and offense? We still see the same Jersey City team we've always known. Oh, no, I'm not going to change. You know, when you're <laughs> successful, you know, you don't, you don't make changes just to make changes. I've been successful playing this type of ball for 26 years, 16 years on the high school level, and my 10 years here, and uh, why tamper with success? <laughs> Charlie, thanks for taking some time before the game, and uh, we wish you the best of luck. You know that. Hope to see you around playoff time. Now over to John Adams with head coach John Giannini of the Glassboro State Profs. Good evening. I'm here in the locker room with Dr. John Giannini of the Glassboro State Profs. Coach, let's talk about break a little bit. Some coaches run their own tournaments. Some people just like to get their teams away to, uh, to states close by, but you went south. Right. We took a trip to Florida last year. We went to Colorado. Uh, I think that break, especially right after the holidays, is a nice time to do something special with the guys. Um, you know, one of the, we could obviously, as you said, play games anywhere, but the reason we travel and try to go to a nice place is show the kids some place that they haven't seen before. Uh, this year in uh, South Florida, we took the kids to an alligator farm. Uh, we took them on an airboat ride in the Everglades. Uh, we took them down to the beach. So we did some fun things down there. And uh, it's a good team building time, too. It's a good recruiting tool. So we want to try to make a nice trip every year. Uh, coming off the break, you've slipped a little bit. You were 10-0 and 0 going in, and I'm sure that's some concern. You know, we're 10 and 2 now. We've lost our last couple games, and both close games. And we do have a good team, John. Uh, however, even good teams struggle at some point during the season. Uh, last year, we started to struggle later. Right now, we seem to be struggling at the midpoint of the season. And it's no surprise because we're in just a killer stretch of our schedule. At Trenton State, who's always tough, especially in their own gym, Jersey City State is one of the two most talented teams in the league, I think. And we're playing on the road here tonight. Then we have Kane, the one undefeated team at home. Then the night after that, we play the 12th ranked team uh, in the country on the road. And, uh, John, we just haven't practiced real well lately. We have uh, two guys hurt right now, Jim Batters being Bob Barrett. And, uh, you know, we're struggling a little bit right now. However, uh, we have the right people. I, I think we play the game the right way, and we're going to have a really good year. Uh, we just have to get through this period, and if we can uh, come out of here with a win tonight, I think we're in outstanding shape then. But it's going to be really uh, difficult for us to do. Well, Jersey City is an excellent ball club, and they've added two players, which I know is a concern to you. Right. We're, we're well aware of them. You know, Neil King and Sean Rooney are major college talents. Uh, but again, in this conference, you get used to that. All the top teams have a couple really top-notch uh, talent-level uh, players. Um, you know, against Jersey City, you have to be concerned with their depth. They play a lot of people. They come at you hard, which may be a factor tonight because we won't go as deep, although I think our first five match up very favorably. I think we may even have some advantages, but they're so deep 
They play so hard. They get a lot of points off the break, off turnover, so we have to get back. We have to take care of the ball, and we can't let them pound us on the boards. We feel that if uh, we try to make them beat us from the outside and execute that game plan well, that we, we have an outstanding chance. Well, you took some of my pregame talk away, but, <laughs> but, but I'll reiterate some of those thoughts. Thanks for your time. Okay. Good luck to you and your team tonight. Okay, thank you, Coach. We'll be right back with the start of tonight's game. In just on the campus of Jersey City State College, Bob Lebline along with John Adams. All the action in one of the big matchups in NJAC in 1992. It's only the beginning of the year, John, and we got monsters already. Uh, no doubt. Uh, both teams are uh, very close to top. This is uh, a swing game. Okay, John, the starting lineup, so we'll let you go over them for them as we go along for the Glassboro's right out there now. Yeah, Glassboro's starting Reggie Riggs uh, out of Camden. Uh, Paul Wedman in the backcourt, 6'4", out of Haddonfield. Frank Seminario out of 6'6", uh, out of Bishop Eustis. Michael Burden, 6'6", out of uh, Cumberland Regional. And number 34, Dwayne Reed out of Woodrow Wilson in Camden. Okay, and now for the home team, the Jersey City State Gothics, this is their starting lineup. Okay, out of... South Jersey, number 20, Ed Baum, a six foot three inch senior guard. Along with him, number 15, Danny Waddleton Jr., 5'11 from St. Joseph's Metuchen. Number 33, that's Melvin Nelson, six foot six inch out of Woodridge. Neil King, a transfer from Ferris High School. And number 23, Darren Watkins, out of Ferris High School in Jersey City. Our officials for tonight's game, the referee is Jeff Plunkett and your umpire is Steve Turner. John, I don't know, but there's, it, it's always electric when you come here. It, it just for some reason, you even feel it sitting in the seat. I know you spent many an evening here and a few long ones, albeit. One, and, uh, one row down. And, right, and uh, this seat obviously a lot more comfortable than where you've been before. Well, the tradition here has been so good over the years. Uh, uh, back when Larry Shiner, uh, president athletic director, was the coach, and of course Charlie's followed through. Uh, Mr. Weinstein, who I had the pleasure right. of, of coaching against, and uh, they have consistently been in the playoff picture and uh, have won many NJAC championships. Okay, we're about ready to go. Once again, that starting lineup will get them as their first offensive possessions. See them in action. Jersey City versus Glassboro, a matchup north meets south. Both teams in the top three in the conference. Six and one for Glassboro, five and one for Jersey City, and controlled by Jersey City, and right off the hop, a jump shot. And Wiedemann with the rebound off the miss by Watkins, so Jersey City showing what they do right off the bat. Yeah, State coming out in their traditional man-to-man -man pressure. One of the keys that we did not touch in the open is how the props will handle the half-court pressure. It's like Jersey City was meant to play defense here. As you see Riggs pull up from the foul line, he's got it. Reggie Riggs, the main man in this guard-oriented offense. And Bob, Reggie is a streak shooter. Uh, if he hits his first couple of shots, he's going to have one great night. That's Watkins, Waddleton with the ball. Interesting matchup right here. I think an excellent move by uh, John Giannini. As we talked in the open, as Danny lets fly, rebound. Put back. Good put back. Darren Watkins has two. I'll get back to the defense next time down the floor. Glasgow pushing it a bit. Riggs the guard right there with the ball. That's Semiralia over in the corner. He's their main man to transfer. He goes baseline and is called for traveling. So a little bit unnerved to start this first half, I do believe, John. I don't used to seeing the props rattled a little bit. Well, again, pressure is going to be a key. Eddie Baum, number 20. Back to the defensive thought. We talked in the open about Jersey City sh only shooting 40% as a team from the floor. Excellent move of coming out in a flat 3-2 zone by Glassboro Profs. Ball handling by Samaria, six foot six and doing it like a guard. Inside out, that's Wiedemann, nice look. Into the hole, good bank shot, Dwayne Reed. That time, Glassboro spread the floor very nicely. Reed, a big-time player and a transfer out of Coppin State of Maryland. Jump shot by Nelson won't go, and there is number 34, excuse me, 33. That was Burden with the rebound, and the ball is deflected out of bounds and will remain 
with the props. The rest of that lineup for the props, Wiedemann's 15, Riggs 23, Semiralia 31, Burden 33, and Reed 34. Four to two early going here, 8-14, 18-14 to go in this first half. Bob Lebline and John Adams at Fry's Gymnasium on the campus of Jersey City State, and good ball work, but it's not deflected out of bounds, missed it. Part of Glassboro's offensive scheme is a lot of give and goes. When the defense turns their back, they move and then they step into the gap area. John, the importance of dictating tempo, you talked about that, and right now Jersey City has it where they want it. Again, though, Glassboro can push the tempo, but I think if they could do it consistently for 40 minutes, I think they're going to have a problem with it. Right now, the flat 3-2 zone, and, and look at the advantage of Paul Widman in the middle. 6-4 in the middle of that zone. Very Waddleton difficult. got three. You know, John, very quietly, this young man, Danny Waddleton Jr., a senior out of St. Joseph's Metuchen, has come on and taken the place uh, and replaced the senior point guard of last season and done a tremendous job at that. Very, very steady. Knows his limitations, knows what his role is with this team, and does it very well day in and day out. Jersey City seems to have pushed them back deep into their offensive set. Semiralia looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. A real good matchup there with him and Watkins Excellent on defense. spacing by Glassboro. They have Jersey City spread very, very wide. Down screens, and there was this cross screen. Okay, that was Paul Wiedemann's first deuce. Eddie Baum pulls for the jumper, gets nothing but air, and here comes Jer uh, Glassboro, used to Jersey City running. Short jumper by Reed, won't go. Melvin Nelson the rebound. He pitches it right out. And Watkins gets it back into the guard's hands, and the ball was deflected out of bounds, and they called it off the hands of number 11 for Jersey City, Neil King. So, you see, we haven't heard from King yet this half, John. Transition is very important for both teams. Charlie Brown works on it every single day. John Giannini will tell his team to take it when they have it. They have the athletes to get it done. Stolen on the double team by Jersey City. Good job by Neil King. John, no love lost in this conference when you're head up with each other. Even from top to bottom. <laughs> That's right. No, head up with each other, meaning just on the court together. These guys may go see each other all summer and even hang out, but when you've got the uniforms on, you, you see no quarter taken here. That's Waddleton on top here. Change of zone, 2 3 match out of the out of bounds situation. They said Baum, he threw a knuckleball up, and there's good rebounding. Look at Jersey City on the boards. Good inside move by Darren Watkins. He has four. 7 6, the Gothics on top. Just under 16 to go in this first half. That's Dwayne Reed, a transfer from Coppin State, as we mentioned earlier. Good patience. This is more of the Glassboro State you're used to seeing. This is what I, I think is an excellent move. Glassboro needs to make Jersey City play defense as long as possible. Reed had the mismatch, just can't get it to go, and everybody flying through the air. And real easy, Nelson takes the rebound. Eddie Baum having trouble offensively at early going. Neil King straight ahead, it's offensive. Excellent position. And uh, that's a little challenge game right there going on, John. They've mixed it up a little bit early, Nelson and... King, and, and you see it. Excuse me, not Nelson. Burden and King, and you see what's going on. This is uh, Neil's second game. Uh, surprising start, but uh, talking to Coach Brown before the game, he's really earned it. Uh, put in his, a lot of practice during break, and uh, he's just an excellent, excellent athlete. Darren Nelson seems to be moving... Uh, excuse, me, oh, excuse me, John. Darren Nelson seems to be moving a lot better now with his knee, excuse me, Melvin Nelson. I was thinking of somebody else. Melvin Nelson, since the knee injury, Coach Brown says a little apprehensive, but he seems to be picking it up a notch now. Well, you know, sometimes the break uh, <laughs> between semesters is very helpful to a coach where it, it can give you the time to rest some of those injuries. And, uh, you know, for most people, there's Semiralia's first try. He's got it. Frank Semiralia, another Division I transfer, John, and he may be the cream of the transfers. Well, he's an excellent inside-outside player. Uh, he's leading Glassboro in three points at 6-7. Uh, Watkins has a three. He has seven. It's 10-8, Jersey City on top here. Uh, Jersey City ready to send in their first sub of the contest. First five minutes, Bob, played very well by both teams. 
And out of bounds goes Glassboro. First sub of the game will be Mark McKevitt. That's He's a foul on the inside on, on Frank Semarillo. Uh, Semarillo pushed off. McKevitt, a six foot seven inch sophomore. Out of Hudson Catholic, he resides in Secaucus, New Jersey. And uh, no lack of height as we get this game going underway, John. Darren Watkins had gone out at 6'5 and hit that jumper. McKevitt gets action right away. Doesn't get the roll, and it's off to Burden. Wiedemann pitches ahead. Riggs for three. Too hard. McKevitt the rebound. Now Baum has it. Neil King's got a deuce. Mr. King can run the floor. Not to mention walk up in the sky a little bit, John. Neil King, I thought he was going to throw that one down. More subs headed into the game for Jersey City. Dwayne Kennedy set to report. An offensive foul. Good defense by Jersey City. Right now, State is very, very quick with their feet on the defensive end. And again, the subs as Charlie Brown got his six minutes out of his first five starters. Kennedy is a five foot nine inch freshman out of Westside High School in Newark, an honor student while he was down there. And number 14, Stefan Beck, six foot two inch freshman out of Plainfield High School. They're contrasting both teams, I think, right now. Jersey City's 10 or 11 deep. Glassboro, eight or nine. Back to the zone. Uh oh, Beck throws it away. Good defense by Reed as we see more subs head rep to the bench for Jersey City. And uh, John, I think we're going to see the full complement today. Glassboro back to motion. Semaralia gets called for the travel. For Jersey City into the game, Sean Rooney, his first trip in. One of the keys to the game starting to take effect. Defensive pressure put on by Jersey City State. Along with Jerome Frink. Now transfer, Sean Rooney transfer, but he went and played at St. Anthony's in Jersey City. And Jerome Fink right here out of Ferris High School in Jersey City. And the sub for Glassboro was number 30, Omar Foote, another freshman sensation, really, who did a good job last time we saw Glassboro. Canada running against his zone, and this is a large zone, John. Semaralia, good weak side help. Samaralia from deep, won't go, he overshoots the basket. He made up his mind Waited. very early. Beck for three, no good. Rebound to Wiedemann, nice when your 6'3 guards can take those rebounds. Tempo in favor of State right now. Glassboro needs to do how, how they came out, and that's run their offense, six, seven, eight passes. Reed with a good put in. Dwayne Reed very quick off his feet. A transfer out of Coppin State of Maryland. The foul and the bucket goes. Basket by Stefan Beck. He's fouled by Burden, and that's going to give him a three-point opportunity. Yeah, Michael did a great job in, in, in helping out, but a cardinal rule is you do not swat down at the ball. All he had to do was get in his face, get a hand up, but you never, never swat. John, they come off shooting. I'll tell you what, the subs came off the bench. McKevitt's got a few shots in there already. Beck has two. Uh, they don't worry about it. Come out and do the job. Well, right now, Jersey City has built up this four-point lead, 14-10, by mostly points off their transition. If I'm Coach Giannini, that's what concerns me. I'm not concerned about my half-court zone at this point. There's the pressure from Jersey City that's broken. Reed and back to Wiedemann. Corner Riggs. In and out. Rebound. Great rebound by Michael Burden in the putback. Burden up above everybody that time to put it in. Yeah, Burden is 6'6". Is very, very strong. I'm impressed with the quick leaping ability of both teams, John. And These are two premier teams. Uh, there's no doubt that, uh, or I shouldn't say no doubt, but I would, I would suspect both of them will be in that playoff situation come the end of February. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be hard-pressed to keep him out of it. Sean Rooney for three. Got it! Six foot, six inches, and shooting threes, John. Welcome home. Sure is a welcome home. We'll talk a little bit about Sean when we have a break. Lob to Burden, and we got a mismatch down there, John. Beck a little smaller and, and exactly. not quite as strong. 
Good Look, zone. McKevitt in the corner. That's Beck. Rooney. Kennedy for three. In and out. He rattles it. McKevitt the putback. Won't go. Rooney the top. Sean Rooney has five. A six-point Gothic lead. And Charlie Brown was a little worried Rooney was out of shape. But that doesn't keep too much out of shape. Well, what he'll do is, is he'll give him uh, four or five minutes at a time. And imagine a confidence level. He just comes into his first game, hits his first two, offensive glass. Glassboro answers back. Reggie Riggs has four. Four-point lead. Frank tries to spin and loses it. 20 to 16, approached in the 10-minute mark. Inside to Reed on the smaller man. His putback won't go, and he's called for an over the back. Quick leaping ability of Dwayne Reed, John. Up and down two times before McKevitt even got off his feet. The, the athleticism on both teams is, uh, is really, really incredible. But again, uh, it's the level of this conference to play, in, and that's why we have teams in the, ranked in the top 20 every single year, and uh, many of them make it to the Final Four. John, the bad part of this whole thing is that there's losers in this conference, and after 18 games or 16 games, you have them, and those teams are caliber teams, too, and they can't even qualify. Yeah, but don't forget, last year, we have 10 teams in the conference. Seven went to postseason tournament. Frank throws it away right into Glassboro's hands, and Glassboro looked to cut this lead to two or possibly one. Semiralia inside, good head fake, ball fake, and he's got it. Yeah, Mark McKevitt is going to have a very difficult time handling number 31. Frank Semiralia, an excellent, excellent player. Kennedy tries to penetrate. And he gets the return, and he's going to try to put this together. Into Rooney. Rooney, good power move, a little hard. And a tie up inside the jump ball situation. Not his shot. Uh, while we have a break, um, Sean Rooney was uh, you know, out of St. Anthony's in, in Jersey City. A 6'7 freshman, 230, and uh, received a scholarship to Duquesne University in Atlantic 10. Long, Long pass. pass. Reggie Excellent Riggs. Move. Got it. With the exclamation point, Reggie Riggs has six. Excellent move against the pressure. Stefan Beck's going to have to read that just a little bit better, John. That's been practiced all week, I can tell you that. Rick Myers into the game now. He's back in action. For Change the of defense. Even score. And they're going to get a call on Burden. Michael Burden's been a little bit too excited, John, I think, uh, in the early going, knocking a few people around, pushing and shoving a little bit. Now he's uh, one more, and, and he's going to give Coach Giannini a, a large problem to think about. He's going to give him some company on the bench, too. Subs in and out now. Most of the original five returning for it. As, as Michael does take a yes. seat next to Coach. Good idea. Michael Burden with the foul. Dwayne Reed, a short break there. Rick Myers, 32. We mentioned him. Omar Foote, number 30. Box set against the 2-3 uh, matchup. Okay, inbound to the key in. Eddie Baum. That's Jerome Frank. Waddleton. Nice look inside. Nelson doesn't get the roll. Semiralia pulls it down. This is Rick Myers, number 32. A success story of sorts there, too, John, being able to get back into action. At the 10-minute mark, I usually look up at the clock, as I have, and Glasgow with five team fouls, State with two. Could be the difference down the stretch. It's not at 20. We under nine minutes. Riggs trying to back in, and nothing doing. Good defense by the Gothics. Semiralia's open. His turnarounder won't go. That's a strange one. Semiralia doesn't miss them too often. Oh, he made an excellent backdoor move, not fighting the pressure. Back in the 2-3 is Glassboro, so a chess match of sort. Baum's too hard. Well, that's, I believe that's 0 for 4 for Eddie Baum, and, and he's still having a problem in that release. Neil King and... Darren Watkins return for the Gothics, so their original starting five is in the contest, and Westboro still working with them.